I want to show you how you can use Excel to do a simulation to see who's going to win a seven game series. So here I've picked the uh, New York Knicks and the Indiana Pacers who will be playing um, beginning their series for the uh, Eastern Conference semifinals um, on Monday night. So here's how we do this. We need some information, right? So you've probably have seen, if you've watched any betting sites, you know, they'll tell you that, you know, the Knicks have a 52% chance of winning or the Pacers have a, you know, 57% chance of winning. Well, how do they actually do that? Well, we're going to make this a really simple model by just looking at the amount of points they've scored and the amount of points they give up and do a little simulation here. But you could make it much more complicated by putting in, you know, individual player data and building a much more sophisticated model. So I need some information. And where do I get this information? Here I happen to be, let me, let me go to ESPN here. And if you go to NBA and stats, You'll see there are all kinds of individual player stats. This is for the postseason, but you could get it for the regular season, etc. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here and I can get team statistics. So here I'm looking at regular season stats for 2023 and 24, but I could again just do the postseason if I wanted to. But I want to use, I'm going to use the regular season because I have more data here. So here they give you the points that the team has scored and also the points their opponents have scored. So let's go with the Knicks first. So the Knicks are not a particularly high scoring team. They've scored, they scored on average 112.8 points per game. But if you look at their defense, they only gave up 108.2. And so if I go back to my data here, you can see I put in the 112.8 and the 108.2. And we can do that for the, um, for the Pacers. Now, the Pacers are the highest scoring team in the regular season, 123.3. But they also tend to give up a lot of points. They're giving up 120.2. So you can see I've put that in. So now, the simple model I'm going to use is just I'm going to average the points that the Knicks have scored and the points the Pacers have given up. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just add them up and divide by two. Or in this case, what I've done is I've multiplied these two together and taken the square root. Now, what's the real difference? If, if they're pretty close, the numbers, it's not going to make a lot of difference. Right? They both tend to score over 100 points per game and to give up 100 points per game. So if you do the averaging either way, it's going to be about the same. All right? If there's a huge differential, if, if um, you know, the Knicks score 150 points a game and they only give up 50 points a game, then you're going to find that, the, that doing this square root thing is going to be much different than just adding them up and dividing by two. But this is the way we're going to do it. And we're going to assume a standard deviation of, you know, 15 points per game. All right. Then you could pick different numbers if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use that for now. You could actually go through each game and figure out what their standard deviation was. But, you know, that's a little too complicated for me, too much data to collect. So what I want to do is I want to figure out how many points the Knicks are going to score based on this adjusted score, right? Based on what they tend to score and what the Pacers give up. And I'm going to do the same for the Pacers, and then we'll see who wins what games. So how do we do that? We use a function called norm inverse, and it asks for a probability. And if I put in rand, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, it'll just keep changing the number. It goes from 0 to 1. So it's putting in a probability, but it's going to change it each time. So we're going to get a different value each time. I want to put in the mean adjusted points. And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that cell. 
and I'm going to put in the standard deviation. I'm using a 15 points, and again, I'm going to hit the F4 key and lock that cell. And I'm just going to copy this down, and this gives us the points, the next score. And if you go to either formulas and hit this button, you'll notice the numbers keep changing. Right? They don't always score the same points. Some, some nights they don't score very many at all. Some nights they score quite a few points. Okay, you can use the F9 key um, as well to get this to, to change the numbers. So let's see what the Pacers are going to score each game. Again, randomly. Norm inverse. Probability, rand, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, adjusted points. And again, lock those cells by hitting the F4 key, standard deviation. Um, lock those cells and we'll just copy it down and let's see the Knicks win if their number is greater than the Pacers so we're gonna put an if and the logical test is this is greater than this then we want a value of 1 otherwise we want a value of 0 so here the Pacers win and let me copy that down for all seven games. So here the Knicks win 130 to 119 Here they win quite a few. Um, here they lose in game six, etc. So let's sum this up equals sum. Now you have to win four games to win the series. Now, if you win the first four games, the series is over, but let's just keep it simple. As long as they win four games out of the seven, they win. So in this case, they only won two games. And again, if we kept changing this, this time they didn't win any games. This time they won four games, four games, three games, five games, etc. So what I want to do is I want to put this sum value here. So that's how many games they've won. And I want to do a bunch of replications, right? I don't want to just keep hitting this key and going, eh, how many times are they going to win here, right? So let's see what we've got here. I want to put in, I'm going to do 1,000 replications, but you could do 10,000 if you'd like. So here I'm going to put in um, one, and I could just put a formula in and copy it down. But another way to do it is, right here under the summation sign is this fill function and this is a series and this is a column and the step value is 1 and let's just go to 1000 and so if you scroll down you would find that we had it numbered 1 to 1000 so what I want to do now is I want to fill this table I want to know how many how many wins the Knicks get in each replication Okay, so I'm going to highlight that, and you can actually scroll all the way down by hitting Control Shift Down Arrow key. And to get it to do it a bunch of times, I'm going to go to Data, What If, Data Table. If you don't have that, you can install it by going to File, Options, and then the Add Ins, and you can have the Tool Pack Add In. Okay, so here I'm going to pick data table. There's no row input, there's a column input. And all you need to do is just give it a separate empty cell. This allows Excel to do the calculation. And when you hit OK, it'll fill that table. And you can see sometimes the Knicks win, you know, four or more games, sometimes they win less than four games. All right. So now we want to figure out the probability that the Knicks win. So what's that going to be? That's going to be equal to, we're going to say count if, and we want to highlight these cells here count if 
it's you have to put in a uh, quotation sign greater than or equal to four okay close the um, quotation mark and we're going to divide by the number of observations which is 1000 or the number of replications so let's see what we get here we get 56 percent okay let's just um, reformat that and we can put a couple decimal places all right and we can keep changing this right we found that when we went to this and we kept changing this the probability changes right we could do the probability that the um, pacers win and that's going to be equal to count if and it's going to actually be a hundred minus this count if again this these number of wins are less than four oops I have to put in the quote less than four oops and I forgot to divide by a thousand divided by one thousand and again if I reformat this you can see that you know the two are related All right, these add up to 100. So this is sort of a simple way to figure out who's going to win the series. Now you could certainly make this much more complicated by putting in, you know, more individual data. Maybe you would have some information about injuries that you would have to quantify in some way or another. But this is kind of a neat way to do it, just to do look at the, you know, number of points you think they're going to score based on what they've been scoring and what their opponent gives up so you can see that their average goes up here because the pacers give up a lot of points right so from 112.8 to 116 the pacers average goes down because the knicks have a good defense and don't give up many points so you do this adjustment and you see at least based on what we have here it looks like the um knicks have you know, a 50, a little over 50% chance of winning. Again, we can kind of keep doing this each time. It's going to be a little bit different, but it looks like it's about 53, 54. Okay, once in a while, it's going to turn out that the Knicks lose. Last time we had less than 50%, but if you do this enough times, you'll get, you know, different values. So kind of a nice way to work out who you think's going to win, um, whether it's a basketball series or a baseball series, et cetera.